Hey tribe, welcome to HD Designs Crochet, HGDC. I'm Heather and I'm 31 from the United Kingdom. I'm a crochet designer, granny square addict, and I teach new and aspiring crochet designers how to make an income from their crochet. So, today is my sit down chat. I am doing my month in review. I'm going to review June with you. I'm gonna go through my finished projects, the highs and lows of being a crochet designer, all of my stash enhancements and all of that good stuff. So, if you're brand new, hi, hello and welcome. I hope you've got a yummy beverage and you are ready. Hopefully you've got your crochet with you, um, maybe even some knitting, and we can go through all of the good stuff if you are returning. Hey tribe, what's good, what's happening? How are you all? Now, Got to do the weather because it's just a British thing. It's really grey. It's been like drizzly, just fine misty rain, um, which is a complete contrast to yesterday, which was like 22 to 25 degree glorious weather, which I think is like 80 something degrees Fahrenheit, um, which is like 22 degrees, 25 degrees Celsius. And it was just lovely, like you needed your sun cream on. And then for the next week, we've just got drizzle and grey rain, so whatever. Um, I have got so much to share with you. Right, let's jump straight into finished objects. I have got quite a few to share with you. Um, I'm going to share a couple that you may or may not have seen before. The first one is this cardigan. It's a granny square cardigan, it's called Renewal. It was named by Cindy, one of my tribe stars. Made very similar squares for a relative of Brad, my partner, and I just knew I needed to make them into some sort of garment. So I made a crochet cardigan. This is called Renewal, as I said, named by Cindy, one of my tribe stars. It's double knit acrylic yarn. And the granny squares are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rounds and then joined together using the continuous join as you go. I'm really pleased with this one, it's really, really nice. Um, and that one at the moment is waiting to be tech edited. And then I also made this one, which is called All Sorts. And this was named by one of my subscribers on Instagram. And yeah slightly more covered in albie hair so just ignore that but I held the yarn double and if you know me you know that I like to hold the black with the colour and it just looks so so good um this is actually chunky yarn because I held double knit double and this one is actually being tech edited at the moment and it's a really nice cozy one just to pull on um if you're mooching around the house or you just need extra layers on this is the cardigan for you so I finished both of those and they are waiting either to be tech edited or with my tech editor and then they're going to be tested and I'm hoping to release both of those from September because that will be more cardigan weather. Although I am thinking that if I can bring them out earlier why not because sometimes in the summer days like today you need to put a cardigan on and in the summer evenings it's nice to have a cardigan, a cardigan, a cardigan, a cardigan, a cardigan, a cardigan. <laughs> I'm going to have fun editing this one. It's nice to have a cardigan with you on the summer evenings as well. So let's see when they come out. But they are being tech edited. And then, and then, let's just jump to the good stuff. I have finished one of the best patterns I've ever, 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 ever worked on. And that's this bag. It is called Iconic. I have used um, hardware, so it's got its own lock, it's got a chain and it's all really nicely joined together and it is granny squares of course with the black with the colour because you know that's what I love. And um, I actually revealed this on Instagram and the crowd went crazy. Um, <laughs> which I am quite relieved about because you know when you, you're working on something new and nothing out there, there's nothing out there like this. I wasn't sure what people would say, but thankfully you already like it. Um, so it's actually being tested 
at the moment by Shard Creates and by Abby Rose Designs and yeah I'm really pleased with this one I've written up the pattern I've done the tutorial but I want to make a slight change to it which I'm going to do before it's uh, published and it's fully lined and I've reinforced it using um, some plastic mesh which is used for embroidery it's Ada um, and that's what gives it the structure so it can stand up by itself I'm really really pleased with this one it's stunning and I'm also working on a smaller version and um, because this is actually like satchel size and I wanted a really mini handbag so I am working on that here's the bottom panel so it's going to be two squares smaller than um, this one iconic ignore that I'll be hairy gets everywhere oh. So I'm working on a smaller version and also I just need to put the um, reinforcement panel into Stella which is the bag that started all of this off. So I'm going to have an afternoon of sewing and getting those two finished so that I can share even more bags on the gram. So if you're not already following me go and follow me on Instagram because there's so much good stuff on there. And also if you're on TikTok there's actually more footage of these bags on TikTok than there is anywhere else so you might want to go watch that as well let me know if you're there because um my TikTok like seems to just suddenly be picking up and um a week ago I had like 200 people following me on there and now they're 600 so uh I think that's because of the bag and people are really liking them so if that's you thank you so so much um so I've just flown through my finished object you have seen them all before it's just I wanted to show you them again and I'm classing them as finished objects still because I haven't actually released them and if I had released a pattern recently then that would have had its own section so just showing you these again I actually showed some of the making of that bag in my previous vlog as well which I'll link above um, because I took quite a lot of footage of it and it's been really really fun to make so if you want to see a bit more jump over to that one after you've watched this um so that takes us on to whips as I said I'm working on a smaller version of iconic I wanted a really dinky mini handbag size I um tried to rush the process in making this I need to go back and just make some tweaks fix some of the stuff that I really tried to rush um <laughs> so so annoying when you do that but anyway so hopefully this one will be done sooner rather than later and as I said I'm also doing the um reinforcement for um Stella this is Stella I've actually trimmed the tassels they were quite a bit longer and I took out the lining so it now needs completely uh, learning reinforcing and the clasp putting back on there so as I said that's going to be this afternoon's task um it's going to be this afternoon's task oh task really pleased with this one though so I will then have three granny square bags to choose and use that makes me happy especially because I wear quite a lot of black like today I'm actually wearing head to toe black featuring quite a bit of Albi hair why but it'd be nice to have an accessory that is a pop I'm also working on a headband so you can see the headband I'm wearing now it's store brought but I'm making a um, crochet version now I originally made one without the reinforcement in it um, and then I also saw that another designer um, had released it, uh, if I can find their name then I'll put it in, um, but they'd released one but I did actually message her and say oh, that I've been working on one as well. Um, but I wanted it to have a reinforcement in there like this one does so that it has its own structure. So I've actually ordered a couple of headbands to go inside, um, so hopefully I'll have that one to show you really really soon. Um, other than that. The only other whip that I'm going to share that I'm working on, because the rest is a surprise, is this one. So I've made all of these squares. 
They are called Bloom and it's like a sunburst granny square and I've made loads of them and then I've started to join them together in black, you guessed it. Really happy with the joining method, I think it looks really really nice, um, would also look really really good as a, <laughs> um, but I needed more yarn. The yarn has now arrived and I will show you in the stash enhancement section but it took a bit longer than expected to get here because I ordered it from the EU not from the UK. So this one needs to be finished and um, I've got design ideas for a top but then it's expanded to maybe a headband or possibly shorts so I'm going to keep working on that and show you when it's done. So I've got a bright yellow in the centre, Barbie pink, light pink, a mustard colour and then joined in black and it's all cotton, four ply cotton. It's the Drops range, I think it's the um, Drops Love You 7 uni colour and I've got some balls of it here which I'm going to show you in the stash, en stash enhancement section. So that's my other whip that I can share with you. They look really, really good. I think that would make a really nice, very, very pretty top. Maybe even a pretty dress. Though I don't know that I want to make that many squares out of four ply. So they're the whips that I'm going to share. There are more, but one, I don't want to show you that many things that you then might not see again for quite a while. Two, some of them are secrets, so I can't even share them. And three, I just, I can't share them right now. So that is the whips that I am working on at the moment. Caveated, disclaimed. So I don't know about you, but when I'm crocheting, I love to have some company. Um, you're probably crocheting whilst you're watching this and not only do I watch knitting and crochet podcasts quite a lot of knitting podcasts you know anyway I also watch loads on graphic design and all sorts of good stuff um, but I also like to read I also like to have audiobooks podcasts TV series so many good things so I thought that I would share a couple with you so that when I'm working on a whip you know what it is that I'm likely to be listening to so, a podcast that I want to share with you is the Making Stitches podcast and I'm sharing this with you because I featured on it. I recorded this and, um, oh, do you know what? It was so much fun to be on the other side where I'm the one that's being interviewed rather than me interviewing someone. So I would like to feature on more podcasts now having done this. Um, so I'm going to give that one as a shout out because I have then been binging the other episodes um, and it's just really nice to listen to other people in, in and around the industry, um, their experiences, how they're doing, all those things. So thought you might enjoy that one. I also find that podcasts are great company when you're weaving in ends because you put it in, you say to yourself, right, it's half an hour, let's see how many I can get done in half an hour. And you actually end up then creating a little challenge for yourself you're kept like busy enough and then you get them done. So then the other thing I really like to do is read and I can crochet and read if I'm making uh, granny squares. So what I do is I will set my Kindle up and then I can just press the pages when I'm ready to go on to the next one. Or audio books are a great, a great, a great way. Oh, it's going to be so much fun to edit this. Or audiobooks are a great way to be able to read and absorb that information. So that's how I like to combine two of my passions, two of my interests. And one of the books I've been reading at the moment is this one. And it's called Answering Anxiety. And I actually have the physical book here because I was gifted a copy because I proofread it and... I did the proof reading and then there's now even a shout out with my name in the back which I'm going to show you. Can you see? It's 
morning. Answering anxiety has been written to help those that are really struggling at the moment and I especially think with the pandemic that mental health has really become a huge, huge topic that is spoken about a lot and rightly so. And answering anxiety deals with quite a few different issues that might be causing anxiety in your life, such as money problems stealing my rest or fear um flooded with thoughts of doubt and fear or how about am i good enough it was really helpful proofreading this because the messages in here is exactly what i needed to hear at the time and so i am actually rereading this again now with um, a friend because we have our own book club but what I am doing is I am dipping in and reading a chapter every morning. Now the chapters are really, really small. Overall, there's only like 150 pages, 100, 100 and, 112 pages in the entire book and a chapter is no more than three to five pages. So every morning I'm picking it up and reading a chapter and it's a really good way to start my day. Now, I proofread this for my church and my pastor, who is Chip Kalawal Singh, is the author. And I have actually proofread, um, I think this is the third book that I've proofread. And then I've also done a proofreading for um, additional materials as well. And when I proofread it, it's just a, um, like a printed A4 document. It was actually a PDF this time because I needed to email it to me because of the restrictions in place and I couldn't visit anybody. Um, so it's really nice to hold the actual book. It's a really dinky pocket sized book. So I've actually been gifted with a discount code as well that I can share with you. So if you want a copy of this book um, and you'd like to use a discount code, then drop me a message below or message me on Instagram so that I can give you that code. It's a really, really helpful resource to have. So both the Making Stitches podcast and the Answering, Answering Anxiety book have kept me company whilst I have been working on my latest finished objects and my whips. How about you? Do you like to crochet and listen to music or are you a YouTube or a Netflix or what is it that you like to keep you company whilst you're crocheting? Let me know below and of course if you want the discount code for the book let me know as well. Moving into stash enhancements, well I have ordered some cotton yarn because I wanted to finish this design and I needed some more yarn to continue it. So I purchased every colour within it other than the mustard and I got two balls of each. So the very bright yellow, the baby pink and the um, Barbie pink. And as I said, it's the Drops Heart You or Love You line number seven. And we have got it's 100% cotton and it's a four ply or a fingering weight yarn and they are in 50 gram balls. And I also purchased um, a lot more black for the joining. I actually purchased five balls of this um, because of the designs that I've got in mind. I then purchased some white for another design that I had in mind which I want to join in white. And I also want to make a sunflower variation of the bloom top that I'm working on. So I bought the colours for sunflowers. So I've got a mustard, different to the mustard used here, ever so slightly because um, I purchased all of this mustard some time ago. So you can just see the colour difference. Oops. So mustard, some of the yellow that is being used in the bloom top and then I got this brown as well for the centres and then I purchased this green and I was speaking to my Patreons, my tribe stars, saying I'm not sure I got the right green. So this is the green and I feel like it's just got a hint of blue in it and it's not a green green that I wanted. I don't know. But then also looking at those colours, I don't feel like they are a summer colour palette, even though sunflowers are summery 
um, and I don't know whether joining it in white will help or not or whether it needs to be joined in like a blue for the sky I don't know but this is the green that I wanted and that's the green that I ordered but even with that green I don't feel that it's summery it looks autumnal so maybe I'll make a square up and then I will decide from there and show you what the square looks like um, but I also purchased these two because I just really liked the colours so that's like a sea glass green and then I've got turquoise and it does look really good with that one and in all fairness I don't really have to include green in the sunflower Decisions, decisions, decisions. White with black. And for stash enhancements, as you know, I'm really enjoying making my bags at the moment. So I purchased some more handles. I got this black one that's got the leather strap to hold as well and that's going to go on um, the mini icon that I'm making and I actually purchased this from the UK whereas all the others that I've had so far have come from China I like that it had the leather bit it can sit on your shoulder and then the chain is gunmetal black don't know if you noticed but I have a thing I don't know if you've noticed but I have a thing for black so that is the other chain and I also got another handle I absolutely love this one I'm really excited to show you the design but I'm not going to show you the design right now spoiler alert tribe stars you know what the design is mm -hmm. I got this one now it is acrylic and I went with this colour because it matches a project that I've started. It's got gold um, clasps and it also has, um, so these are gate rings and you push the ring and it opens, see? Um, but it also has lobster clasps as well. I really like it. The only thing is the length. So it actually makes the bag quite long, but I think with a smaller bag that's okay. Especially if you want to do crossbody, which I do quite often do. Um, so yeah. I've been having a lot of fun researching different bag and like components, all the different hardware, the different lengths of the straps, different locks. There are so many options out there, so much fun. But this is one of the ones that I've opted to try out. They also had it in a really nice pink and a couple of other colours. Um, so I'm going to see what it's like, but I can see more of these featuring in the future. And in terms of stash enhancement, I was gifted with yarn. Thank you so much to Siobhan Crafts and what I made next, Tanya. They got together and sent me this yarn. So Tanya sent me this one. It's gonna blow out because it's a gray day. YouTube lights run and I'm wearing black, so. But it is bright anyway in real life. This is the logo. Hand dyed here in the UK. And also, fun fact for you, Siobhan has a nut allergy, which I also have. So it was really nice but to just message someone and be like, isn't it so annoying when people do this? Isn't it so annoying when this happens? And like somebody to understand. Complete side note, but made a world of difference to me. So this is hand dyed by Siobhan and this one's called Happiness. Um, it's sock weight, which is four ply or thing fingering. I'm really not keen on that word. Fingering weight. It's 100 grams, which is 400 meters. It's 85% SW Polworth. I really wanted to say Southwest, but I think it's actually Superwash. 
<laughs> Southwest Southwest Poworth, Superwash, Poworth, and 15% nylon. And it's got these pops of colour in it. So lots of pink, um, the neon yellow, the orange, the greens, it's got purple, turquoise, mint, it's like a Tiffany colour. Now, they said, I can't wait to see what you make out of it, but we think it would be granny squares. And I'm, I'm so like, I'm thinking, I've got so many ideas. But also, um, Siobhan then decided to add this one in for me as well, which is called Fruit Salad. It's the same base and it's um, a lot more pinks, yellows, and orange. speckled and so much goodness so much goodness so I've got these two and then as well um Siobhan also put in mohair there's no way I'm gonna get that to show up properly because it is very very bright anyway and it looks neon um so this is lemon it's lace weight there's 20 grams here which is 168 meters 72% kid mohair and 28% silk What's it got in it? Label. And I just love that. And apparently if you hold it double, it gives you a really nice floofiness. Um, so I'm so tempted to um, cake that up already. And I've got, I just think it will look really good because now I've got my summer tan as well. So now I'm really torn because I've got a bag idea, obviously. But then also I've got like um, a cardigan idea because I think this would make <laughs> a really nice cardigan to put on so I wear like a lot of sundresses or um like all of my summer wear is black or white and I just think these and a bit of orange black white and orange okay let's stick leave it at that I just think that these would look really good as like a cardigan to pull over um in the evenings when it gets a bit chilly so I was thinking like to hold these together and then maybe mix it in with some um, cream not white because it's a bit too stark but cream or black because oh black <laughs> and yes I know it would make it quite thick um, it would make it like iron weight but I don't mind that I think um, a cropped iron weight cardigan in bright colours would make a really, you know like in the summer when it's just a bit too cold in the morning for you to just go full sundress but you need something. And then same in the evening when maybe you're in a pub garden, you're chatting with friends or you're in your own garden having a barbecue and you just need something to put on. I won't wear this near a barbecue. My brain's just gone off on a whole chatter of like, the smell, no, 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 but you know what I mean in like, You've got the girls around for a cocktail party and it gets a bit chilly. It's something that you can pull on. I love it with the black. Oh gosh. In my mind I was going to hold it with like a cream or a white but now I've held it up with black. So thank you so so much for gifting those to me. I also received some stitch markers. <laughs> Tragedy. He put something down and he can't remember where. It's hard to think. Oh. I was also gifted some stitch markers, which I've put in a safe place, and now I can't remember where that safe place is. Have a sneaking suspicion it's in a whip bag. Why didn't I just put them in my stitch marker thing? Because I wanted to keep them separate to show you, and now I put them safe. Oh. 
Where? Oh. No matter, I took some footage so I will show you those anyway. So, yes! All of the good stuff. Thank you so much for gifting this to me and the stitch markers. And... What am I going to make? Because it's got the nylon in it, I feel like it would make it really robust if I was to make a bag. Like, um, you know, like I have with the granny squares and put the reinforcement panel. I feel like it would be quite robust and probably wouldn't, like, pill. But then also I want to make some kick-ass socks out of it because look at the colour. Then also granny squares. And then also I have a tendency to hoard four ply. Like that top part the bigger one is full of four ply it's already colorful and I've just been like gathering it because one day the pattern's just going to come to me and I'm going to be like gotta make it so for this next section I'm going to grab my crochet hook and I'm going to make some granny squares whilst I talk about the highs and the lows of my month as a crochet designer um I haven't got loads and loads to share but I never miss an opportunity to crochet if I can you know what? I'm not going to crochet. I'm going to take apart this panel that I need to remake. <laughs> take apart this panel whilst I share the lows. We'll start with the lows so we can end on a high. And if you're wondering, I'm taking about taking apart the panel because um, I rushed it, I bodged it, and I'm just not happy with it. So I'm going to redo it. Um, so I think in terms of lows, I would say that loneliness or not loneliness, but isolation has been, um, something that I have felt quite a little bit more this month than I have in other months. Now I know wherever we are in the world, COVID has affected us in some way. And, um, here in the UK restrictions are starting to lift. They've not lifted on the trajectory that we was kind of promised before. Um, some of the restrictions are going to stay in place for now. But um, the vaccine's been rolled out quite heavily. And, um, you know, we can now go to shops. Cinemas are opening. Some sporting things are opening. Um, the gyms are back open and you can now eat in a restaurant as well which before we could only eat outside um so that's been really good but for me i have just been feeling a little bit isolated and the reason i'm talking about the restrictions is after a bit of reflection i think part of it has come from seeing so many people posting that they're going back out in the world and they're doing stuff um has kind of made me feel a bit isolated in that I haven't been out as much and doing as many things. Um, I'm still waiting to get my vaccine because I have to go to the hospital and that's a whole different thing. So I can be um, supervised because I have reacted really adversely to uh, medication before. So I think just seeing like the world lifting up but feeling a little bit like I'm being left behind. And then also restrictions haven't lifted enough that I could possibly go and do some of the things that might lift it. So like the loneliness, um, the isolation feeling. So for example, um, I think had it not been in the middle of a pandemic, then I would have gone to coffee shops and um, maybe worked from there a couple of hours um, every other day or whatnot. And that is where I did a lot of my revision for um, my degree as well my postgraduate degree um but things aren't at that level um so there wouldn't necessarily be that chatter that background noise um and with like the tables needing to be um spread further apart for the restrictions the capacity isn't as high so i would feel a little bit guilty going to a coffee shop and then purchasing like one drink and then sitting there for a couple of hours I don't drink tea or coffee I'd just be purchasing water um and it's not quite the same buzz anyway and then also I would have been doing more um like networking type events 
and I did sign up to do one but because the restrictions weren't lifted the way that we anticipated in the UK it's been postponed so it will happen at some point but it's just not happening right now um, and because I work alone there's there's just me on HGDC um, that day-to-day -day interaction isn't there and so sometimes that can make you feel isolated it's a, a weird one to explain because I'm really happy at home I love working from home but it's sort of that um you know when you go and put like I, I don't make tea but you know when you nip into the kitchen to get a snack and somebody's making a drink and you'd have a little chat or um, you'd turn around to your colleague and be like can you believe this has happened or can you believe they spoke to me like this or this or and I don't have that and then also because I work from home um, it, I'm not necessarily going out anywhere at all so there's no interaction with somebody on the bus there's no interaction at the bus stop there's no popping into a shop um, and don't get me wrong I don't that's not the sort of interaction I'm craving, but what I'm saying is um, that a whole day can go by and I might not have spoken to anybody unless I purposely went out of my way to speak to someone or to nip into a shop or something. Um, so yeah, a little bit of isolation has been creeping in, but I've spoken to my business coach about it um, and putting a few things in place to help combat that. One of the things that I've found has really helped is going for daily walks, as silly as it sounds, that has really helped. Um, and I've been trying to do this thing called, um, basically, I've been trying to commute to work. So the next room is my bedroom. If I wanted to, I could roll out of bed and come straight in here and start work. But what I've actually tried to do is put some structure in place and um, create a, I, I try not to use the word routine because it's not, a strict routine but it is a structure that I do in the morning of um, getting myself up, dressed, ready for the day, um, I go and check on my garden, I'll have my breakfast, sort I'll be out and then get on with some work rather than just rolling into here in my pyjamas and not moving all day. Um, I've also been trying to go on more walks so I find that I did try this thing where you do your own morning commute where you go for a walk in the mornings even around the block and then you arrive at your desk and you're ready to work um, but I found that I really benefit from a walk after work and I really benefit from a walk on my lunch break as well even if I'm like oh I've got so much to do a 15 minute walk it gives me so much more energy than if I try to just push through um, these are all things that I know because it's how I used to get so much done when I was doing HDDC part time. Like an evening walk would give me that second wind to get a couple more hours work done in the evening on HDDC, having done a full day's work um, at my day job. So yeah, that's been one of the lows. It's not been like it's not been like at crisis levels or anything, but it has really been on my mind, especially because. Um, Brad, my partner, he does like 12 hour days, so like this morning, he started work at 5 a.m. And when he gets up at 4 a.m., there's no chitter chatter. Like I can go straight into, have a good day, are you excited for this? And he's literally like, shh, shh. <laughs> he's just not like that in the morning. Um, and then tonight he will be back at about, 5 p.m. What day is it? Thursday. No, he won't. He'll be back on 8 o'clock because he's going to go and see his niece. Which means that if I don't go out, then today I will have spoken to nobody. Because he's gone for like over 12 hours in a day. And, um, yeah. This is all new to me because um, I have been working on HGDC full-time since... Um, January so we're coming up to six months now and every month is a new learning curve every month is new things to get to grips with and it's always evolving which is to be honest it's like one of the most fun parts about it and the fact that crocheting is my job obviously um, but I've just been making sure that I now factor in more time so to do things to combat that so it might be um, 
going for walks, arranging to do stuff in the week. I have a friend that has most Wednesdays off, so like yesterday we went and did a girls date at the garden center and we got lunch. Things like that really, really go a long way because then today, if I wasn't to see anyone, it didn't really bother me because I had my people top up yesterday. Um, and then I think that only other low, and it's not so much being felt personally by me, but seeing it elsewhere online is um, because restrictions are lifting, because we're going into the summer season, a lot of online businesses have seen a drastic reduction in their sales. And I know this is because um, people's behavior is just different at the moment. You know, they are sick of being stuck indoors and they are enjoying that things are opening and going to garden centers and having lunch and ordering rather than ordering online they're, they're going into shops and buying things in person because we can do that now um but and also it's about time because a lot of the shops that have been shut have really been struggling in this time but then also um it makes me sad because all of these online shops are now struggling they've seen a drastic reduction in their sales but these were the online shops that were keeping people going during lockdowns and come winter if we're to go back into another lockdown these things these shops and online small businesses might not be there because they're not being supported now um so i'm seeing quite a lot of like my business owner friends and people that I know through Instagram saying that their sales just seem to have dropped off a cliff and like my sales have been a lot quieter as well don't get me wrong like drastically reduced from um, the last couple of months but then I'm not really panicking because um, everyone's circumstances are different finances blah 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 but also I know that come winter it will pick up and maybe just it's made me think about um, more seasonal items more seasonal patterns that I could potentially release um, next summer to combat this like quieter period um, so yeah just spare a thought for any of your favorite online businesses um, and if you can then just put in a little top-up order of some sort just to keep them going so yeah they're the two lows um, but then they're all all of these things are here to teach me and I've learnt quite a, a bit from those two in the last um, month definitely. So on to the highs of the month and um, the biggest high for me was getting the updates out on workbook one. So for anybody who doesn't know, workbook one is part one of the HG Design to Crochet handbook for the crochet designer and I released it back in um, April and I have seen so many designers come out with their own patterns which is just fabulous um, I don't want to be like I'm so so excited because <laughs> there's um, this sound on TikTok where I'm like so excited and it's just taking the mick out of YouTubers and podcast owners that are like so excited so now I'm trying not to do that but I am so excited about everybody's patterns um, and being able to help in that way and um, I've also put some updates out there so I wanted to make it a little bit more user friendly I wanted to help get results quicker um, and make the navigation within the workbook a whole lot easier so I have added in some checkpoint pages so that when you get to them you can make sure you've done everything you needed to do within that section so I've actually published those and um, I'm really really proud of them because it's made a great resource even like it's improved it even more anybody that's already purchased a workbook gets lifetime updates so they've all had those um and then i released the updates and i had some purchases go through as well for people from people that had said like they'd been umming and about it and then they saw um the updates that i had spoken about and they just knew it was for them so that feels really really good um to know that more people are going to start as a crochet designer 
Another high has been the love that iconic my crochet granny square bag has been met with. Um, the amount of comments, the amount of likes. I think when I posted the first reel, it got saved by like over 100 people. And then when I posted just a video clip, same again, if not more. Um, and I've seen an influx of people come and find me because of that bag and then just so many people being so excited um, because it looks amazing and also the other design ideas I've got because of that as well, because of the bags. If you've left a comment on any of my posts on Instagram or TikTok telling me, or even on YouTube, telling me how much you love that pattern, thank you so, so much because um, I felt a little bit nervous putting out a brand new design out there that nobody had ever seen before and you lot have just been so so lovely to me I can't thank you enough and especially when you share what colours you want to make yours in because I there's so many possibilities and um one of my testers Abby is using like a um 70s colour palette oh my gosh you need to see it so I'm now really excited so excited for when I see all of your bags pop up on my Instagram feed and another high of the month is that one of my reels randomly got picked up I will put it on the screen for you so you can see it and it's got 43,000 views on it which like for me that's crazy that one's gone viral because I usually get somewhere between 2,000 to 6,000 views and I'm wearing Promise, my granny square dress, and it says point of view when someone says they don't like your style. And I literally just do a sassy face and then the voiceover is like, and what do you want me to do about it? And it's been seen by 43,000 people and it's got like almost 3,000 likes on there. So if you have been one of those people that has been sending that to other people, liked, commented, whatever it is that's kept it going, thank you because um, without a doubt, I'm sure that's how more Granny Square lovers have found me. So, he goodbye, <laughs> hello and welcome. The numbers don't really matter, like, numbers is just data, it's not part of my self-worth, it doesn't mean that my business is or isn't successful. 43,000 views is not 43,000 sales, and as I said, my sales have been the lowest they've ever been this month, just like for a lot of other online businesses but then I've had the most views on like my social media analytics are completely popping um but it is really nice to see something that I've created go further so that more granny square people can come and find me and also it's then meant that YouTube not YouTube Instagram has been showing me more granny square creators as well it's like it suddenly learned what it is that I like so now my explore page is full of granny squares whoop whoop Thank you for watching my crochet chat. I hope you've enjoyed it. Comment below um, with what it is that you like to keep you company while you are crocheting. And I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye. I'm going to get in bed and crochet.